This is how you make music cover out. So, I mean, you've seen me make this before, but this is the final recipe video that I'll be making for this dish. This is the recipe for miso carbonara. That's gonna be the gold standard for everything I make from this point on. I mean, not much to say. Combination of Italian, Japanese. Oh, this guy do it first a couple years ago. Might not try. All right, let's do it. one scallion or green onion. We're gonna julienne it in nice and long skinny strips and we're gonna use that as a topping. Now you want these to be long and skinny so that there's a little bit of a crunch when you bite into it, but not too much of a presence where it takes away from the main dish. And we are gonna put these in water to take away the rawness. We're gonna do one half of the shallot. And we are going to do a fine dice. And we're going to do one half of an onion. One garlic clove. Alright, my eyes are killing me. But mushrooms next. We're going to use about half of this. Now, these mushrooms are optional, but adding mushrooms is a great way to add umami to this dish. All right, now we're gonna make the glaze. About one tablespoon of miso. Tablespoon of sake. One tablespoon of mirin or mirin. And to finish it off, we're gonna do about half a tablespoon of soy sauce. Mix it all up. Make sure to get that miso all dissolved. So this is going to go on the pork as a glaze after it's been crisped up. All right, set this to the side. And we are going to do about 35 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano, real stuff. Now you can get pre-grated Parmigiano or Parmesan, but most of the stuff that comes in the bottles like Kraft, they have cellulose in them as an anti-caking agent. And that's gonna really mess with your emulsion. So if you want like a super creamy sauce, then I suggest using real Parmigiano Reggiano that you grate yourself with nothing else added to it. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. To this, we're going to add more miso. Again, about a tablespoon. Oh, I'm really running out. And we're going to do a couple cranks of black pepper. And finally, this is crucial, the juice of half a lemon. Actually, what's zest it to? The lemon juice of, or the juice of half a lemon. Oh my god, we forgot the most important ingredient. And then lastly, the egg. Let's mix this baby up. All right, this is done. Set this to the side. And finally, we have this pork gel. We're gonna use about 0.25 pounds, a quarter pound of it. So save the rest. This whole package is just 0.63. So maybe like a third. Yeah, that should be good. We are gonna slice these into more manageable sizes. Also, chop your meat last so that you don't have to clean it in between and just use the same cutting board when you're chopping your vegetables and your meats. Now you can substitute pork belly or even like worst case scenario you can do bacon but i think pork shell is going to give you the most flavor and hopefully the most texture as well and do a super light salting this dish is going to be super salty from all the parmigiano and the miso and the soy sauce and whatever so we're not trying to add too much sodium here all right that's your prep done let's clean up a little bit and then we can get the cooking started Ooh, hello first off we're gonna start pork off in a cold pan to render all the fat. So no heat on, just straight into the pan. And then we're gonna do a medium heat. Now pork chow is very fatty, so there should be a lot of fat coming out. And that's where all the flavor is. Not all the flavor, but that's where a lot of the pork flavor comes from. And then in the meantime, I have this going. This is just a pot of water to boil my pasta in. 
Don't forget to salt your pasta water, but only a little bit. Like I said before, it's a salty dish, so I'm going to guess what every chef says and undersalting it. Now, there's a lot of sugar in this miso glaze that I made, and we don't want that to burn, but we want the pork to get crispy. So what we're going to do is let the pork get crispy first, and then turn down the heat and then put this on. Yeah, that's looking nice. Look at that color. Alright, that's what we like to see. Once we get to here, we are going to turn down the heat to low. And then glaze these bad boys. And then we're going to turn the heat back up to medium. We're going to take this off the heat and onto a plate and set aside. Now that same pan goes back on the stove. You see all that? That's all flavor. So we are going to try to extract that with some sake. Heat back on. We're going to do medium heat, a little bit of this, and then something to scrape all that fond off. Very nice. To this, you're going to add some olive oil, and you are going to add shallots, garlic, and onions. Hold off on the mushrooms for now. Go. Now these are all gonna be the aromatics that build the foundation of this pasta. I don't wanna let these go too long, but wanna get some nice translucent color on these onions. Around four to five minutes on medium heat should be good. If you overcook them, they're not gonna have the ideal texture. Once these onions are sort of translucent and before they burn, we're gonna add the mushrooms. We'll cook down these mushrooms a little bit. Can't forget about the pasta. Not bad, 10 to 12 minutes. So we're probably gonna take it out in about nine or eight. We're gonna turn off the heat and wait for the pasta to boil. We're gonna use some pasta water to finish up the sauce. Just a little bit, about a cup and a half, probably much more than you need, but hey, it never hurts to have more. With the pasta almost done, we're gonna turn this back onto the heat, low heat, and we're gonna add the pork that we cooked earlier just to reheat it. We're gonna add pasta straight from the pot. To this, you're gonna add a knob of butter. This is when our egg mixture comes into play. Remember this, this is how we finish your sauce. So take your grated cheese and egg and lemon and miso, take your pasta water, or we add a little bit to temper this mixture. There you go. And now we are going to toss vigorously. I know this isn't very vigorous, but you want to keep the pasta moving so the cheese and water don't clump and they mix together nicely. Taste and modify however you're feeling. If you think it needs more salt, then add more salt. If it's too runny, cook it down a little bit more, maybe add some cheese. But do be careful because the cheese is very salty. I personally want a little bit more of that miso. We're going to compensate by adding a little bit of this leftover glaze. And as it thickens up, add more pasta water as needed. You're done. We're gonna take off the heat and plate. All right, here we are. This is a plate I microwaved for a minute. We want it to be hot. Topping time. And uh, don't forget to add some pieces of pork on top. Not like that. We're gonna do some black pepper. More Parmigiano. And then these green onions on top. I'm going to top it with some shichimi togarashi. Now this is optional, this is just Japanese spice. And if you want, this is extra, again optional, but some seaweed. And then finally, some sesame seeds. And there you go, this is my miso carbonara. Itadakimasu. And that is how you make a miso carbonara. It's not too salty. It hits the Parmigiano flavor with the pepper and the lemon juice and the freshness of the scallions. The presence of the miso is there. And honestly, the pork got to be pretty crispy. Yeah, you're not gonna make this dish every single day, but once in a while, yeah, I think it's worth the effort. I mean, yeah, it's not a traditional Italian carbonara, but carbonara, I think can be interpreted as in the technique of emulsifying the cheese to make the sauce 
And honestly, who cares? It tastes good. And if you ever do feel inclined, reference this video and try it out. You probably will not regret it. Let's move to the dining table. I gotta talk. Okay. The reason why I created this channel was because I had a passion in learning more about other people's food cultures and spreading my limited knowledge about food. I think food culture is a great way to connect with other people and that's what brings me joy. Like making these connections with these different types of people, with these people from different backgrounds and learning all about their food culture and making that connection through content or spreading knowledge or sharing or eating together. That's what I enjoy. That's why I like in life. Life is probably better with some pasta and good company. If you do recreate this dish or try this recipe, let me know how it goes. Let me know if you hate it, if it sucks, or if it's the most insane thing that you've ever tasted. But yeah, let me know. I'm interested to hear your expeditions. Maybe someone will put me in my place. But until then, this will be what I picture to be miso carbonara. If you have taken the time to like at least watch some of this video, then thank you. And as always, everybody eats. I gotta clean up. It's tough. What's the sound shot? All right, that's all. See you later. Good night. Everybody eats. See you. Bye bye.